In the top stories, a 21-year-old shot dead this morning. The Barbados Workers' Union warns that Barbados must also brace for private sector layoffs and 37 million US dollars worth of cocaine seized in a multinational operation in the Caribbean. Welcome to Nation News for Tuesday, January 28, 2014. I'm Natasha Beckles. You want your loved ones around to celebrate, especially those living far. And with Digicel Top Up, Dad can help you bring life to the party and be part of the celebration. Ask him to send you Digicel Minutes. Receive free instant additional credit. Stay connected here and there. Ask your family abroad to send Digicel Minutes today. An early morning shooting ended with the death of one man and left family and friends in shock. Torian Cleveland Earl of 10th Avenue, New Orleans, St. Michael, was shot in the head just after 4 o'clock this morning while making his way home with a group of friends. The 21-year-old died on the spot at Kensington New Road, also in St. Michael, not far from where he lived. According to police, Earl was shot by an unknown assailant who escaped on foot. Police investigations into the shooting are ongoing. The Barbados Workers' Union is making it clear that its focus is not on any one group of employees, but for workers generally. This assurance was given by BWU General Secretary Sir Roy Trotman at a press briefing this afternoon at the union's headquarters. The outgoing general secretary, who turned 70 in May, said this was not the time to categorize or label workers into special groups. However, he did say that layoffs in the private sector are expected to follow those that will be made by government by February. So Roy notes that this will make government's job that much more difficult. Our view in the BWU is still that at the end of the day, government has to set the environment and prepare the engine, which is the private sector, or the economic growth. But that in the final analysis, government must be the employer in the last resort. And if you send home people now without catering for them as they seek to transfer and be part of the private sector, then all you're looking for is chaos and mayhem. We don't support that view. An accident this afternoon in the Pine St. Michael was a brief shock for those who live in the area. It involved only one vehicle, driven by Khadija Thomas of Oldbury Terrace, St. Philip. Just after midday, the 18-year-old lost control of the vehicle, which ran off the ABC Highway, punching a hole into the Samuel Jackman Prescott Polytechnic guard wall. A bus shed was also destroyed. According to police, Thomas escaped with minor injuries and was transported to the FMH clinic by private transportation. In another traffic incident, Allison Rowe, an employee of the Inland Revenue Department, was taken to hospital this morning after she was involved in an accident by the traffic lights at the junction of Bridge Street and Trafalgar Street in the city. Reports say the 35-year-old was trying to cross the road when she was struck by a car driven by 72-year-old Robert Hope of Paines Bay St. James. Police say Roe complained of pains to her back and neck. Britain's Trade and Investment Division has dispatched a mission to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean in a bid to ramp up its trade opportunities. Its aim is to facilitate business between a number of agencies, including the Caribbean Development Bank, the United Nations, the Inter-American Development Bank, and the European Union. British High Commissioner Victoria Dean hosted the 22-member delegation at her official residence last night. She told those present that she is confident that the mission will be a fruitful one for all parties involved. I hope to spend four years here very much pursuing uh, the, what we call the prosperity agenda, which is about opportunities for the UK and opportunities for Barbados and the region. I think there are some challenges, but I think there are real opportunities too for us to pursue together. So thank you again for being here. Please uh, do mingle much more, drink more, eat more, um, make these conversations really pay off for all of you. We go across the region now. St. Lucia's Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Dr. Kenny Anthony, has warned that the country's fiscal deficit cannot be allowed to increase any further. He says if this happens, the government will be forced to approach regional and international agencies for financial and technical assistance. So we are taking measures to reduce our deficit to a level that is regarded as desirable by investors. However, greater effort has to be made to reduce expenditure to get us on a path of fiscal sustainability. 
we have unfinished work. We have to try to equate our current revenue with our current expenditure. The U.S. Coast Guard sees U.S. $37 million worth of cocaine in a multinational operation in the Caribbean last Wednesday. The Coast Guard said today that 2,500 pounds of the drug will see south of the Dominican Republic when a 25-foot boat was spotted with suspicious packages. Four suspected smugglers were detained and will be transferred to law enforcement authorities in the U.S. Their identities or nationalities have not been released. Jamaica's Justice Minister Mark Golden says Cabinet is to receive a submission shortly from his ministry for approval to be given for the development of a medical marijuana policy and industry. Golden said given international trends, the government believes there is need to reform local laws to allow for a medical marijuana industry. Up next, we hear from Geraldine Edward with the commentary. At Courts, every day we bring affordability, convenience, innovation, and style to over 1 million customers in 11 countries. From homes to communities, we are proud to make a difference in the lives of many across the region. Courts, bringing value home. The year has just started, but it's almost the end of January. Oh, what a month. There's been a rush of activity with government promising the list of workers to be sent home, unions presenting alternatives, and the bees buzzing across the country. Oh, what a hectic start to 2014. And while we're not like the Bahamas, Jamaica, or Trinidad, with murder and mayhem every day, we still have our problems. For example, we need to cut the talk, stop making excuses, and curtail the lawlessness by public service vehicles on our roads. Despite the gloomy picture painted, there's much to be thankful for and hope for a better tomorrow. And finally, criminals typically leave their home in order to commit crimes, but one alleged robber in Alabama preferred to have his victim come to him. Michael Antonio Long was arrested for allegedly robbing a pizza delivery driver who brought two pies to his home. The 21-year-old and several other men, allegedly armed with handguns, robbed the man of cash and the pieces. The driver got a good look at the suspects and described them to police who found the pies and the delivery bag in his home. And that has been Nation News for Tuesday, January 28, 2014. I'm Natasha Beckles.